fellow British Southern Cameroonians, fellow Ambazonians, dear compatriots, good evening. Once more, the struggle for the actualization of the independence of our homeland, the Southern Cameroon, Ambazonia, finds us at the precipice of history. I stand before you today as a child of providence. A few weeks ago, if anyone had said, I would be addressing you today in this capacity as your acting president, there was no way I was going to believe it. But when unforeseen circumstances cropped up a duty to our revolution called, I had no choice but to answer yes to the call. Fellow Ambazonians, our revolution has had to pass through different stages and through different leaders within a very short time. When it comes, when it escalated in October 2016, with a consortium. A short while after that, the regime in French Cameroon banned the consortium, arrested its leaders, and others escaped into exile. The arrest and banishment of our leaders was carefully calculated with the intention to annihilate the revolution. But the revolution didn't die. Those who had flown to safety in, uh, in exile rekindled the fire of the revolution, forming Skakov, and then transforming it to the governing council and from the governing council to the interim government. French Cameroon hasn't been very comfortable with the rapid progress that we have made less than a year and a half in complicity with Nigeria and the French government, they abducted our president, Sisiko Julius Tabe, and 11 other leaders, hoping that the revolution runs on the ground or is crushed. They were mistaken. If anything, what they did has only given this revolution the needed fuel or petrol to run it to the finishing line, which is Boya. I have come to you today to, to pledge my commitment to take this revolution from where Sisiko Tabe left it, and by God's grace, if he is not back yet, to take it to the foot of the mountain in the Prime Minister's Lodge in my hometown of Boya, the eternal and historical capital of the Federal Republic of Ambazonia. I thank members of the interim government for the trust they have bestowed on me by nominating me to lead this revolution at this crucial, critical moment. And I also thank you for accepting me as your acting president. My fellow British Southern Cameroonians, Ambazonians, if there was ever a time for all of us to summon our faith and courage to stand upright, proud, and combative. That time is now. Our president, Sisiko Julius Ayogtabe, and our leadership were abducted just over a month ago. In the weeks since, the anguish of that incident has left many people despondent and heartbroken. These feelings have no doubt been exacerbated by the unremitting violence visited on our people, on our land, and into our homes, markets, farms, and streets by terrorists in uniform dispatched by the government in neighboring French Cameroon. Decades of our quest for sovereignty our long-standing culture of peaceful neighborliness and hospitality has been stretched beyond breaking point from the events 
in our land over the last year. Yet our people at home stand proud, resilient, uncovered, unflinching, undeterred, and combative, and reverted to the historic price, which is ours to seize, if we can push uphill even harder and further. Dear Southern Cameroonians and Amazonians, we have seen this spirit in full display across the list of communities, villages, and towns which have borne the full brunt of exactions by the army and gendarmes from French Cameroon, namely Kwakwa, Egweko, Tadu, Mbonge, Kembong, Bangem, Munyenge, Dadi, Akwaya, Kwen, Ekombe, Kombone, Bole Bakundu, Eyumojok, Batibo, Ndu, Kumbo, Awin, and the list is growing. For over a year now, the evidence has been crystal clear for all to see. The turmoil in our homeland results directly from the nullification of the right to self-government and independence in the former British Southern Cameroons and Bazonia. Over 40,000 of our countrymen and women have been expelled from their homes since the infamous administrative order of last November by the SDO for Manu. Those who initially fled into the forest for safety have been haunted. Those who stayed behind were shot. Our most vulnerable and infamed, who lay hopeless, helpless in their homes, have not survived the rot of Mr. Bia's marauding gendarmes. A 90-year-old blind mama in Kwakwa was burnt to death in her own home. If the rest of the world thinks that we will vanish quietly into the night, through, throw down our resolve and cower the indecent and grotesque atrocities now unfolding in our land and homes and streets and communities, I will hasten to remind them that we Amazonians are descendants of the stock of hard toiling men and women in years not so long ago, toiled and bled to cultivate 395,000 squares of miles of industrial plantations of the CDC that stand as a monument to their endurance till this day. We are the children of the nameless many. On those backs so many for so long have continued to reap where they did not sow. We will resist till the last one of us, the intrusion and aggression of French Cameroon on our land and our people. Fellow British Southern Cameroonians and Bazonians, the citizens of this new republic to which we gave birth last October 1st, are prepared to tell the world openly, categorically, unapologetically, here and now, that if they have chosen to turn their gaze to our plight, to be unmoved by our suffering, to remain deaf to our loud calls for succor, if they are unshaken to our protestations and desperate appeals for their intervention in this historic injustice, then we, left to carve our way into history, have decided we must fight. We, the people of the British Southern Cameroons, will no longer dwell at the nexus of nullification and the historic injustice it engendered in our land. We will fight for justice because fighting for justice is to fight for right. We will fight to secure the safe and unconditional release of our leaders because there too 
justice is on our side. We will fight their illegal abduction from Abuja. Buhari's breach of injunctions on his own country and international law. We will fight against Mr. Bia's summon of foreign martial support for his butchery of our people and the spoiling of our land and our lives. We will fight, dear Ambazonians, because the spouses and families of our leaders remain resolute in this fight. If the diplomats and peacemakers of the world have chosen to dim the light of legality and international law to afford Mr. Bia cover for his litany of ignoble violations, we will fight in the dark until our blood pricks through consciences. We must fight so that our sisters, wives, mothers, and children should return home and live productive and happy, happy lives as they are due by right. This is my resolve to you today. With one voice, my fellow Ambazonians, we must remind the entire world that they cannot continue to shun the responsibilities, their responsibilities to history, legal and international order in the British Southern Cameroons. They cannot allow rogue governments like that in French Cameroons to trample on the rights of our sovereign nation, flout commitments and protections afforded every sovereign people and pretend that order and security could or should prevail. If the people of British Southern Cameroons cannot use the full arsenal of legality to assert and reclaim and reestablish our rights under international law to pull the freight of our will to self-determination across the finish line to sovereignty, if the international institutions with their lofty pretensions to a global community will not now in our time take a stand and make amends, adjudicate and rectify the flagrant violation of its own mandates granting independence and self-government to my people, to our people, to the people of British Southern Cameroons, then the cornerstone principles enshrined in their founding charter, the ideals inked into those venerated documents will stand nullified. Their principles vacuous and their will stand for naught. On all fronts, we are engaged in nothing less than an existential battle and we cannot afford any distractions coming at us from any quarter. Some of them are familiar and others are agents and instigators inspired by malicious interests and uh, who work tirelessly to introduce discord and disunity in our ranks. Upon taking over office, I have come to terms with the fact that the circumstances surrounding the abduction of our president and others need a thorough and immediate attention. Lots of things we have seen learned about the abduction do not add up. One of the first things I am set to do in this office is to follow every lead about the abductions until all the sus suspects or collaborators and perpetrators are brought to book. I have therefore in this respect asked that any person in the interim government serving either officially or unofficially who knew about the January 5th meeting, meeting in Abuja and who was supposed to be at that meeting should immediately step back from playing any role 
in the interim government until such a time that they are cleared in the investigations I am launching. Likewise, outside of the interim government, every person of interest will be made to appear before the committee doing the investigation. You can rest assured that no one will be too big or prove too powerful to avoid the, right, the radar of our investigations. I am giving the Commission only two months to finish the investigations and deliver results. The Commission and its composition will be announced in the days ahead, and I am appealing that we all settle down and give it time to get to the bottom of this matter. Now, let me make this important points in my summary. Now is the era of self-defense. From effective personal self-defense to legitimate Ambazonia community protection programs to stop the wanton destruction of lives and our property in Ambazonia. We are therefore going to work to accredit and embrace all self-defense and security groups that will endorse our IG rules of engagement. I will be reaching out to all in the days ahead. I hereby wish to extend an olive branch to all movements and our able activists in this struggle to bring in their best contributions on my table and let's serve our great country now together more than ever before. I will be giving all Ambazonians a direct hotline to send in their suggestions. We need to fund the struggle now. Our brothers and sisters on Ground Zero are paying for the war with their blood. We must sell our jewels and deny ourselves every comfort to pay for our freedom with our last might. I am declaring the 15th day of every month till we get to Boya in southern Cameroon, Ambazonia, National Day of Fasting and Prayer. Fellow Ambazonians, permit me to leave you with this quote from our beloved president, Sisiko Julius Ayuktabe. Short live the struggle, long live the Federal Republic of Ambazonia. May God bless you all.